The story of today's video began back in July of 2023 when I came to the realization that every single leak that I had fixed over the years thinking that it would stop the very minor leak I had in my wet bay was in fact never going to do the trick because I had a crack in my gray tank. Now we did a video, episode 282, where I show the various steps that I used to diagnose the leak and how we ultimately decided that we were gonna get it fixed at National Indoor RV Center. We had actually arrived the week before and had plenty of work done. And now we were waiting for the next crew to check in so that the crew that's gonna be working on replacing the tanks could be the same all the way through the job so that everything that gets taken apart by one particular tech gets put back in by the same technician. Last week's video, number 286, was actually part one, and this is part two, so if you missed it, you might wanna watch that one first. For the rest of you, sit back, prop up the legs, and enjoy your education on what it's like to have your wet bay ripped apart. This sound is, in, is indicative of the importance of what we got going on here on Miles. You'll notice the emergency that is being indicated by the sound. It's a serious piece of business when you can't flush the toilet. I think first off I have to say it's kind of humbling when you take off the fancy plastic uh, front on your wet bay and you look at all of the simpleton little piping menagerie of stuff that's in there and it's at that point when the argument that many people have like well you know why do you pay so much money to have a Newell or a Prevo, you know? Well, I got news for you. I bet you 10 bucks if you take off their plate, it doesn't look like this mess of spaghetti. Now, I'm shining the flashlight here on one of the biggest issues we had, and that was the uh, venting of both the black and the gray tank were different on the new tanks versus the old tanks. You can see that the old tank has the venting pipes very close to where the tech can get at them at the end of the tank. And it was the reverse on the new ones. So once again, Dean had to reinvent something and just couldn't slam it back together. And that's why many times it takes a long time to put things back together because you can't reuse a lot of the same thoughts and process. You have to modify it. You can see off to the left here, I'm shining the light on a water pump. Well, I've been carrying a spare water pump for six years. So of course, I pulled the spare one out, gave it to Dean, and I said, hey Dean, put my brand new one in and give me the old one, I'll start carrying the old one. Here's a shot of the new tanks. You can see that the vent piping is much more inboard. and That did cause probably at least a half a day or more delay in figuring out a piping scheme and uh, sending somebody to go get the piping. Here's another stage of the operation. You can see that the metal support has been unbolted from the side of the bulkhead. The tank is just hanging in here, perched, ready to come out. And I'm sure Dean's going to need some help on this one. Sometimes you have to look at the silver lining on a project like this where you're ripping into your perfectly good wet bay that just happens to leak a little bit. When we rip this all apart, while I'm doing my due diligence in here, the good customer that I am, dealing with the good RV shop, National Indoor, I discovered 
<clears throat> and I don't know if you can see it here. I'm holding a light and a camera at the same time. I'll try to zoom in on it. This yellowish hose here is in fact my aqua hot hose. And you see this little blemish right here? If I stick my fingernail on that, it's very deep in that hose already. And you can see that that's a very stiff hose because it has this metal uh, little 90 degree frame here to hold it in shape so it can take a corner. I'm going to take the opportunity to have that hose cut and a new section put in there because that is ready to go. And when that would go, I would lose the fluid that's going to this radiator here. And worse than that, I wouldn't be able to fix it because all the tanks and everything would be in the way and this panel would be back installed. And the century fluid is $80 a gallon and there's 12 gallons in there. And if I lost all of it, I'd have a problem. So we're going to take the opportunity to fix a couple of things also. Up here, you can see that all along this edge here, I have a gap that does not look like it's leaking, but I'm going to ask them to take the opportunity to caulk that all away. And we talked a little bit about this frame rail here going through this bulkhead and I will have uh, on the far side it's a little hard to see on the other side of that frame rail actually is where the cables are that have caused part of the abrasion problem on my tank let's go take a look at that here's those cables and those cables were sawing a hole in the corner I'll show you the corner we're going to have to whittle away a little clearance in there before we put this thing back in. Here's that edge along the bulkhead. Here's the rear tire. And we'll caulk that bulkhead edge as well. On the left hand side, this tank was fit up in between the frame rails. And you can see one frame rail went here and one went here. And I got a couple modes of failure here. We think that we've discovered where it was leaking. You can see that there's this drool mark coming down. And if you look ever so closely, You can see, if I move the camera around, and I have a helmet light on, so I'm, let's see if I can shine with the light from the side. Ever so slightly, there is a line that you can see a shadow on. I'll stop moving the camera and I'll put a circle on screen. That is the proverbial $10,000 leak, if you can believe it. This is the corner that had the hoses abrading against it. I'm going to go around over here so I can get a little closer and take a look at that, baby. Yeah, that wasn't my leak, but it was going to be the next one. Can you see it? Oh, I see a line. Yeah, and that's that it. Is the crack. Oh, I can feel it. My thumbnail goes in there. Really? Yes. Oh, look at that. Water's coming out. Okay, yes. do that again. Yeah, that's, okay, put the light a little bit away here. Let me do the light because I'm doing the camera. All right. Let's see if we can get that water stuff going on again. Remember, you got to look at the lens to see how it looks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, how did you do that? I, I just put, touched it. I put my, I pressed yeah. on it and I put my nail on it. Wow. Ask that yeah. question again, Sue. So, did the crack happen because the, something was rubbing on it? I see this. No, no. 
That crack literally happened it's, because it's, it's a defect. It's on the seam. And guess what? That crack, that's a $12,000 crack. Oh, God. Perfect. I ain't going to touch that one, honey. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Unbelievable. 12000 crack. You couldn't just bond it? Uh, well, yeah, I guess uh, you could. But then you got to ask yourself, how many other cracks are there in there? That is so you true. kind of want to start over. Yeah. It's old. It's been bounced. It's been abused. Right. It's now, don't get rid of me because I'm pretty old and I'm... You've been bounced and abused. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, I have to confess that I've been spoiled by going to National Indoor all these years because almost every RV tech that I'm able to work with is like Dean where we can sit down and talk about some issue that I had, that if he can help when he's reassembling it, or if he can help by changing it, we can in effect end up with something better than I started out with. Now what I started out with was the black three inch tank on my left hand side of the valve. That fitting, that square fitting that holds those four screws was cracked and it was not able to be replaced because all of the fittings were glued together in such a tight arrangement that there was no way to fix it. So I asked Dean and I said, hey Dean, can you perform a miracle and move everything such that we have enough room left to right to be able to put a small section of three inch pipe and one and a half inch pipe and connect it to a boot so that when the day comes that I have to put new Blade X valves in, I can in fact buy the whole shooting match, the whole assembly, take it apart from the rubber couplings and put a brand new one in and in essence never have to worry about my four inch flanges being cracked anymore. Guess what? He performed a miracle and that's what I have now. This is my gray one down here, and kind of not wild how that's looking already. I'll have to show this to those guys and see if they want to epoxy this up before we put it in there. So I asked Dean if he had any JB Weld and he said no actually I have the exact epoxy mix that is needed for tanks like this. And I asked him, I said hey uh, why don't we go all the way around on this seam and make sure we're not going to have any problems. And Dean said sounds like a good idea. One thing I like about National Indoor RV is when you're working with your RV tech you can ask him to do things uh, while he's in there anyway, he's working on something that just irritates the heck out of you. This stupid little shower valve thing here that I will show you how it eventually used to be mounted and probably show you the final product here when it's done. But took the opportunity to get rid of this thing that always sort of leaked. And remember I showed you before that I had a leak in the making, which was this coupling now that's put in here. We have a heater hose coupling in here. The hose was intentionally cut and spliced because it looked like it was a nick that would eventually end up being a hole and it's in an area that's impossible to get at. So Dean is getting ready to put the new water tank in eventually. Of course he's going to put the gray in first because it goes up above it. But one of the things that we had to do was decide whether or not we were going to reuse some of the old parts or put in as much brand new as we could. And I opted to be a good customer and have everything brand new because that limits the liability immensely on the outcome of the job. You can see here that 
there's a little bit of re uh, reinventing, especially in the area of the tube that allows the water to spill out if you overfill and the actual tube that allows air into the tank to help it be able to be filled easy as well as the water to be able to be withdrawn from it. And that's what Dean is working on now. So he's working back and forth. That's the beauty of a company like this that has the depth of workforce where he's working on about three or four different areas on here. The minute he needs parts, he can go to the parts department, tell them what he wants, or better yet, they'll have parts chasers that he'll give an idea, this is what I'm trying to do, uh, draw a little sketch, and the parts chaser then will go to all the different supply houses that they work with and go get the parts for them so that the master tech can keep working. And you're the master tech. <laughs> So this is the invention that Dean came up with to cover those hoses and then when we put the tank in we're going to try to shift it towards the passenger side and stay away from those hoses. As it turns out that was the aqua hot hose that goes back to the rear radiator to heat the bathroom and we didn't want to move those hoses around and create another problem trying to fix our clearance issue here. The moment of truth. I hate to videotape him because I should really be helping him. He's working by himself, getting his baby in here. My God. So I got here extra early. Even at that, you can hear the backup alarms for the work starting here. I got this camera set up. I'm hoping I can capture the reassembly of this mess here. Last night, Dean was able to sneak the gray tank in and start assembling the gray. Eventually, this white plate has to go back on, along with the new hot and cold valves. Here's a close-up what we're working with. You can see that there's very little headroom clearance to be able to work. You have to be a very patient, diligent person. Sooner or later, down below here, the water tank will get put in. You can see that my leaking I caught early enough that my board wasn't even rotted and the floor isn't rotted. Here's a close-up of the wet bay side, the clearance that Dean has to work with on the top. He had to do some modifying on this breather mechanism because the tank manufacturer changed the entry point where the water comes through. So he re-engineered it, no problem, back in business. Took a few trips to Home Depot, but he got the job done. We got a modification to this mechanism here. We'll talk about that later when more of it's together so it's easier to explain. Here's an example of one of the many times I could stop in and check up on how Dean's doing and we could talk about some of the miscellaneous changes that we wanted to do along the way to get a better product when we were all done. Now, 
I was kind of amazed to see the general manager, Todd Springs, periodically pop in on my job. He popped in on other people's job. And he kind of just made sure that he knew what was happening in his operation. I actually even saw him uh, moving a few vehicles and trailers out that customers were picking up. So he definitely is involved. Now you saw Dean here was working with a two by four and that's one of the tough things about being an RV tech was that it can come apart a different way than it has to go together sometimes because the new componentry changes over the years. So I have to admit that when I was doing the editing on this time-lapse video portion here, I was exhausted. So when I quite by chance caught Dean laying down on the job here, I pretty much understood. I guess I should also let you in on the fact that Dean worked 65 hours, five days straight, getting our rig back together in one piece. D-Day, we're filling the freshwater tank with water and beginning the testing process. And to say I'm nervous is an understatement. Today is Thursday, October 26th. And this is the moment of truth. Today we're gonna do testing on uh, fixing and finding any leaks that might exist on the mass of pipes and connections and tanks that were installed during this repair. RV Tech Dean came in an extra day to work on this so that we could actually move over under the awning here and get hooked up in a sewer and water spot so that we can do laundry and run a lot of water through all the tanks and use the valves a lot and check to make sure everything is okay. Ah, life is good. We're back in the rig. We really do have an advantage being here at National Indoor because as you can see, we have a 50 amp plug-in and we have a regular sewer and water connection that allows us to do all sorts of things to test all the piping that was worked on, disturbed, or otherwise taken apart and put together. We're taking showers, we're running our laundry, we're using the pump, we're using the pump with the city water. We're doing everything that we can to test out so we don't have any issues down along the road. Now we had a couple of small things that we were able to get fixed, but all of the stuff that was hard to get at, all of the stuff that would have been nerve wracking if it would have had a drip or two, it was solid as a rock. So I don't know if you can tell in the lighting here underneath this awning, but I don't know about you, for a 2014 Newmar Dutstar, I think Miles looks pretty good. And what you're seeing here is the aftermath of probably the lowest level ceramic coating that you could have done. We had the regular ceramic coating done, but we had very, very minimal uh, paint correction and buffing done to keep the cost down. And we're gonna actually have a special video on that to show you uh, what was entailed and everything that we had done. And we'll try to show how it turned out the best as we can with the lighting and cameras that we carry. You saw on screen that we actually have another uh, repair and upgrade that we're gonna be working on shortly. And that's gonna be, we're gonna be replacing our Lifeline batteries that are six and a half years old, even though we don't have any trouble with them yet, like to keep it that way. And we're gonna be updating and replacing our old 10 year old Magnum inverter with a Victron MultiPlus 2. 
why don't you consider subscribing so you don't miss any of those upcoming episodes. We promise that they will be great and you will want to check out to see how the Lithionics battery system and the Victron equipment work together like a dream on our Numar Dove Star. See you next week.